plays beneath the greatest Gothic spans in the world in one of the finest cathedrals in Christendom. Trying to get my message through. Beat groups and cathedrals. Where else but Liverpool? But what of the other sounds of the city? The engines of ships, the teleprinters, the typewriters, the voices of commerce. Liverpool was born from the sea to be one of the great commercial centres of the world. A city that mirrored the achievement of industrial England. They were world merchants, these Liverpool gentlemen. They had wealth, but they had vision too. St George's Hall, one of the finest concert halls in Europe, is a symbol of its age, a monument to culture through commerce. Everything they did was on the grand scale. They looked outwards to the four corners of the earth. Liverpool has always had this extrovert quality, this looking outwards, this sense of wide horizons. A city with the salt of the sea in its veins. Sea shanties, ballads, folk songs. The music of Liverpool has deep roots, but tender vines. From these beginnings grew the Mersey beat. And from these beginnings grows another sound. The youngsters of Merseyside in the hall of the Royal Liverpool Philharmonic Society. Liverpool Philharmonic Orchestra has its home, an orchestra proudly supported by its city, virtually the oldest orchestra of its kind in the world. Do we sometimes forget that Liverpool can boast its orchestra even before Vienna? Gaudiamus Igitur, they sing. Let us rejoice while we are young. Music that rings across the city to where students of the University of Liverpool assemble for the nightly ritual of the dining hall. After all, it is a student song. These are youngsters to whom the city extends the hospitality of itself and its university. Youngsters who have come from all over the world to stretch themselves in their chosen direction as far as human thought will go. In science, in the arts, in medicine, in all those studies in which the University of Liverpool takes special pride. stretched as far as human thought will go. Beyond that, only the glory of God, the soaring of the coronet of the Metropolitan Cathedral of Christ the King. What other city but Liverpool would commission a non-Catholic to design its Roman Catholic cathedral, and commission a Roman Catholic to design its Anglican cathedral, and then cite them at both ends of a street called Hope Street? Hope may be of a different kind, where twice or so a week at Anfield and at Goodison Park, the roar of Liverpool football fans echoes round the world. Hope in the guise of Aintree, Haydock Park and the Grand National. 
hope for even the humblest at the municipal golf links, where the zealous know that it is only a few miles to Hoylake and Royal Birkdale. But for the lazy, simply a band in the park on a summer's day. In Liverpool, you can walk for miles across the city through an unbroken chain of parks and gardens and never know the constrictions of metropolis. These parks were once the homes of merchant wealth. Today, the world walks and plays where 18th century crinolines once rustled. Today, the world walks with ghosts. Echoes of the generations of families who for half a millennium have lived and laughed and wept and died in Speak Hall. This is a heritage which the city gladly cherishes for all. The world can walk today for pleasure where only marsh and reeds once grew. At Otterspool Promenade, one of Liverpool's windows on the Mersey. Or walk for purpose through libraries, museums and art galleries. This is Henry Moore's bronze of a fallen warrior, part of the Walker Art Gallery's modern collection. The gallery basically grew out of the private collection of William Roscoe, who was a Liverpool banker and sold his collection in Liverpool in 1816. This Simone Martini is without doubt the prize of his collection and more than any other picture has given the Walker Art Gallery its international reputation. Today, its real value is beyond price. This is wealth from the sea with a vengeance. Wealth from the sea, and wealth for the beginnings of Liverpool's museum. In Liverpool, you can never be far from the pull of the sea. This museum grew out of two great Victorian private collections. Joseph Mayer, a Liverpool goldsmith's world-famous collection of antiquities, and Lord Derby's collection of zoological specimens. The real beginning of the museum lay with Lord Derby's birdskins, of which we now have over 100,000. Many of them are quite irreplaceable because they are original types or else they are now extinct, and scientists come from all over the world to study them. They had an eye for the best, those old Liverpool merchants, and the money to buy it. And they began one of the finest public library systems in the world. It is Liverpool's boast that not another public library in the country has so many books on its shelves on open access to all. It is typical of Liverpool that when it was necessary to find half the purchase price of £50,000 to save this Rubens from going out of the country, the money was subscribed in three months. People who would never go near an art gallery are often surprised to find that paintings that they have known all their lives actually exist in the original. And when did you last see your father? See your father. See your father. See your father. No, you can't get away from art. But if it's a question of respectability, then Liverpool's Photographic Society is the second oldest in the country. Its list of presidents goes back to 1864. Would the old photographs have looked like this? Or this? Or this? 
Photography has changed. So has the theatre. still amused. Movement and music can still entertain, although the fun of folk dancing in Liverpool or elsewhere lies in the doing of it, in the taking part. English Folk Dance and Song Society, Blue Coat Chambers, School Lane, Liverpool One. Once it was a school, a Blue Coat School, built in the days of Queen Anne. Today, the Blue Coat Centre provides studios for professional artists, a centre for societies, a meeting place for amateur enthusiasts a clearinghouse for ideas in art, drama and music. Here, the Liverpool Mozart Orchestra meets informally to play for pleasure. Here, a prize-winning entrant in John Moore's biennial exhibition of contemporary art, explains... This is the father figure of the painting, and here we have the mother figure. And this is the child, and the intimate relationship between mother and child, against the hard relationship of father and child. And this line running through the centre of the painting is the relationship between the whole family. And here we have the father figure is split in two half which is the, based in the home and half patterns in black and white and, and prize-winning artists of a different kind the constance millington formation team dance in the elegant setting of the ballroom of liverpool's town hall And elegance. Liverpool gentlemen, Liverpool ladies.
Liverpool Leisure. Liverpool Leisure. to beat music what New Orleans was to jazz. Some of the new voices may be strident, but they show originality and they have one prestige. If the fruit is good, it is because the seed was well sown and the soil fertile. I'm very respectful, very, I feel very humble when I consider the great traditions of places, of cities, of countries, because more and more I see in the world today that people assume that they can achieve anything overnight. It is possible, of course, in an engineering fashion to build anything, to build factories more quickly by putting twice as many people on the job and so on. But that is not the building of culture. The culture of a place is like the organic growth of a tree. It cannot be hurried. And when one has a great tree, a great oak tree, one must be very thankful for it.